Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. You know, I'm always trying to figure out what the heck is coming next. I'm always trying to look around corners. I'm always trying to play 4D chess with this thing because what's on the news is really yesterday's news, okay? If you're a stock picker, you're wanting to get in on those stocks before the curve. You want to be ahead of the curve. Now, I watched this movie the other day and I was completely blown away because I guarantee you 99% of you haven't seen this movie. This movie probably depicts one of the truest SHTF breakdown of society and rule of law uh, depictions that I've ever seen in film. I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's brutal, it is unapologetic, it's nihilistic, it's everything that Hollywood refuses to be because they always want to bring us those happy endings to make us feel good about stuff because people would rather feel good than approach reality and look at it for what it is. So I'm watching this movie and it's called New Order. Okay, you need to go and watch this movie after if you want to know what it's going to be like when the shizzy really hits the fizzy. Now, I've often talked about on this channel how it's not just going to be a complete descent into anarchy. If the last two years have showed us anything, it showed us that the powers that be are going to do whatever they can to keep some level of rule of law. And there's going to be pockets of excessive rule of law in a sea of anarchy. That's what it's going to look like. You're going to have these fiefdoms of panoptical, tyrannical control amidst this sea of cannibalistic lawlessness, just like it was in the medieval era where you had these fortresses, these castles, which had to protect all the little peasants who were paid their little pittance in order to protect them from the raiders. Now, without revealing any spoilers that were not already revealed in the trailer, the plot of this movie is essentially that the rich have become unapproachably rich and the poor people have simply had enough of it. In the year 2020, billionaires added $1.9 trillion in wealth. What happened at the same time to the working class, to the middle class? A lot of people lost a lot of money. And in addition to that, because of inflation and shrinkflation and shortages and all the rest, people have had their purchasing power reduced significantly. So what that means is that the wealth gap has drastically increased. And if you didn't know, the USA has one of the greatest wealth gaps of all the G7 countries. And in fact, it has the fourth greatest gap between rich and poor in the world. This movie depicts that tipping point where the rich just got too damn rich and the people had nothing left to, to lose so they revolted, they rioted in the streets. And you always see those scenes of revolution and rebellion in the movies. And typically what's depicted, and it's also depicted in this movie as well, I should say, is that oftentimes when the peasantry overthrows the ruling class, it actually doesn't end that well for the peasantry because they end up eating themselves out of house and home in a mad scrabble to get whatever resources and loot and pillage, whatever they can, and the whole system just gets destroyed. You've seen that depicted in uh, the Snowpiercer movie, or actually the TV series, Snowpiercer, where they take over the train, which was this very tight-knit, uh, controlled ecosystem, which was all in balance. And yes, there was elites and there was poor people, but it still existed in a fine-tuned balance. Once the poor revolted as depicted in that movie, the whole system broke down, collapsed, and everybody almost died. The same thing also happened in the movie Batman 3 with Bane. Um, the Joker is another great example of the breakdown of rule of law and you know all the rich people getting mauled and mugged for all their stuff. Another great depiction, of course, was The Hunger Games, District 13. You find that the tyranny that Katniss Everdeen was under her whole life was actually replaced by an even greater tyranny. And you come to find that the guy who everybody thought was a villain in the show was actually the lesser of evils because the people who wanted to revolt and overtake the elite were actually worse than the elite themselves. Now, I'm not making any judgments about that. I just find that quite fascinating in a way how Typically, these revolutions 
never really bring forth anything better. If anything, everything gets really bad for a while until things reassort themselves in as democratic a way possible. But what you need to understand with all of this rambling about this amazing movie that you really got to go see is that right now, I do believe that billionaires and very wealthy people are scared. This is why billionaires want to bring in universal basic income. The only way you can maintain your power differential that you have in society is to ensure that the people don't go crazy and they don't revolt. So what do you got to give them? You got to give them those stimmy checks, okay? Because we're not ready for universal basic income yet, but that is coming. This is the first leg of that. They know that that's the only way to keep the people and their pitchforks beyond the gates. Because at some point or another, people are going to get wise to what is happening. They're working two jobs just to get deeper and deeper in debt. The food isn't going to taste as good. The water is going to be increasingly more toxic. Their lives are going to be miserable. They're going to be depressed. They're going to be angry. Desperation is going to be the new norm as they oscillate between lockdown and recess. And people are going to get fed up with it. So in order to keep the people at bay... They concocted this idea a long time ago. You know, we, we kind of need a welfare system. If you're a billionaire and you're building bunkers with Ron over at Atlas Survival Shelters because you're worried about something happening in the near future, then you got to keep in mind that these people are not stupid, okay? They understand that if people get too poor, if they get too desperate, then society is going to destabilize. This is why there's a lot of billionaires who want to pay more, who want and are willing to concede some of their wealth so that they don't have to concede all of their wealth. Another thing that is beautifully depicted in this movie is that there is no loyalty at the top. At the top of the whole thing is this kind of secret society and then there's like this military dictatorship and there's just so much corruption between these uh, different pockets of excessive rule of law amidst this sea of lawlessness that everybody's just a backstabber. There is no loyalty at the top and I think the people who are at the top kind of understand it. So here's what I think is going to happen in the next few years. I'm just going to look into my crystal ball for a second, okay? We're approaching a point where materials are going to be increasingly more scarce. There's going to be more geopolitical turmoil. The wealth gap is going to keep increasing and automation is going to start replacing people from a lot of the jobs. So what do we need to do in order to maintain control of things? Well, we need to bring in some kind of some kind of system that we can really uh, keep good tabs on people, okay? Because we know that people could potentially be pushed off the edge if we are not able to provide them with everything that they've been promised for all these years, whether that's your pension plan, your social security, whatever the case might be. When all this stuff eventually runs out, they're going to have to make sure that they can control the situation. So any draconian measure which is being put into place right now, brought in on the Trojan horse of whatever crisis decides to present itself next month. Every crisis that presents itself, they'll present a solution and you can bet that that solution is probably going to be permanent. So here's what's going to happen. In order to inspire compliance, let's just say that, in order to inspire you to comply, they are going to give you some kind of ultimatum. But it's not going to be a law. You know, we're not saying that you have to do this. You know, we're not saying that, you know, if you don't do this, you will go to jail or something. We're giving you a choice. If you don't do this, then maybe you just don't eat and you starve to death. That, that's all we're saying. So in order to prevent the joker from happening in real life. They're gonna to continue to dole out the funny money that is the US dollar, which is the global reserve currency, until people around the world just lose faith in it and it basically tanks and they can no longer give people stimulus checks or they can give people stimulus checks, they just won't be worth a damn thing. They're gonna to continue to do that to the point where the whole panoptical state has been so refined to the point where they can just turn that key of totalitarianism. If you don't know what turnkey totalitarianism is, it's this idea that you set up a society as such that all the things exist there for you to 
immediately at the flick of a switch go into totalitarian mode where everybody is monitored, everybody is policed, and everything you do and say is regulated in some way, shape, or form. And if you do not comply, there's going to be harsh consequences. You could argue that we're already kind of at the point where they can do that. Not quite yet, but we are certainly getting there. There's going to be a point in the future where technology is so invasive and so pervasive and widespread, we're at the flick of a switch. We go into total lockdown and there is nothing you can do about it except run off into the forest. So when the money runs out and the climate deteriorates and it's time for World War III, they flick the switch and it's game on. Either you're in or you're out in the wasteland, in the nether region, in the place where people shouldn't go. What are those people called in A Brave New World? The ones who aren't part of the system? I can't remember what they're called, but I think they're called primitives or something like that. Right, they're primitives. So I guess me and many other people on here are probably just going to be primitives running around the wilderness buck naked having a good old time anyways guys go check out that movie new order i assure you you will not be disappointed one thing i will say is don't watch it with kids and don't watch it with anybody who might be uh, overly sensitive to depictions of the really dirty sides of human nature we'll say okay because there's a lot of brutal scenes in there a lot of unapologetic scenes that you really don't see in, in a lot of movies anymore but the fact is, things like that are going to happen, but they're going to happen much worse and in much greater amounts than can it ever be showed on film. That's why they always say the truth is gonna be scarier than the fiction, because the truth that you see in a movie of collapse, you're only seeing one protagonist, one antagonist. All those things are occurring thousands and millions of times over as society unravels. Go check it out, guys. You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper out.